If you would like to know why the United States government is shut down right now, much of the answer lies in this letter. August 21, from Congressman Mark Meadows, Republican of North Carolina, to Speaker John Boehner and House Majority Leader Eric Cantor. It's a letter signed by 80 Republican congressmen demanding the House defund Obamacare as a condition of passing a continuing resolution. Now, at the time, this was nothing more than a sort of ceremonial fringe comment, red state comment thread printed out and put on paper. But this is now the governing blueprint for one of our nation's two major parties. And as we look through the signatories on this, it occurred to us that while some of these people are well known to you, for instance, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, many are not. But they should be because they run the Republican Party and they own this crisis. So tonight we introduce our new segment. These are the people who are running the country, featuring the small clique of rabid extremists who have taken control, even though they represent only one thirtieth of the power of the three branches of government. Our inaugural member, Congressman Ted Yoho of Florida, who, I confess, I had not really heard much of until yesterday, when it was reported he said this about the country defaulting, I think we need to have that moment where we realize we're going broke. I think, personally, it would bring stability to the world markets. That's an idea so daft that I asked his Republican congressman, his Republican colleague, Congressman Reed Ribble, about it last night. Your colleague, Congressman uh, Yoho said that actually breaching the debt ceiling would, quote, bring stability to financial markets. Do you agree with him? No, not at all. I think that's just crazy talk. So who is Ted Yoho? Well, he is a veterinarian of 28 years and now a freshman Republican congressman who pulled off an incredible victory in 2012, vanquishing a 12-term incumbent, Congressman Cliff Stearns, in the Republican primary. Yoho won that primary by 829 votes with the backing of Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and now former Congressman Alan West in a district redrawn by a heavily Republican state legislature. Yoho is a member of the Florida Veterinary Medical Association and the Florida Association of Equine Practitioners, and his familiarity with animals showed in his campaign ads. Career politicians are like pigs feeding at the trough. The career politicians have given us $16 trillion in debt. It's time for new leadership. I'll repeal Obamacare and balance the budget. Yoho, an NRA member, of course, has also distinguished himself by carefully riding the birther wave. So you accept the fact he was a born American? <laughs> uh, I'm not. No comment. Are you a birther then? <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that, Chris. Yoho had previously said in a town hall meeting that he would consider co-sponsoring Congressman Steve Stockman's birther bill. And in that same town hall meeting last August, Yoho, Yoho said this about the tanning bed tax in Obamacare. I had a new doctor in our office the other day, very dark skinned and two non-dark skinned people. And I asked, I said this to him and they started laughing. I said, have you ever been to a tanning booth? He goes, no, I don't need <laughs> So therefore, it's a racist tax, and I thought I might even go get to a sun tanning booth twice so that I can come out and say I've been disenfranchised because I got taxed because of the color of my skin. Like many in the Tea Party, Yoho views himself as engaged in an epic struggle for justice that's right up there with some of the great struggles in all of history. It only takes one with passion, he said. Look at Rosa Parks, Lech Walesa, Martin Luther King, people with passion that speak up. They'll have people follow them because they believe the same way. And smart leadership listens to that. Joining me now is Charles Pierce, writer-at-large for Esquire magazine, political blogger for Esquire.com, where he's just written a piece about the 113th Congress called The Reign of Morons is Here. Uh, All right, Charlie, you have been covering politics for longer than I have, and I think there is a temptation when one covers politics to think, this moment, this is the worst. This is the worst it's ever been. These craven crooks and maniacs who are running Capitol Hill, they're the worst. Give me some historical perspective. Is it really as bad as it appears to me? Well, I don't go back to the Congress of the 1850s, regardless of what I may look like on your TV screen, so I can't speak for the the pre-Civil War era. But I'm old enough to have remembered what went on in the 60s and what went on when the first Reagan class came in uh, with uh, with, uh, uh, Larry Pressler from South Dakota and, and Bob Caston in Wisconsin and that bunch, and they were pretty wild, but nothing compared to this. I mean, I mean, you're, you're ta- you're, I mean, you are talking some of the great live theater of all time now. It, it is. And amazing. now what are we going to get? Well, is, I'm sorry, now what do we get? 
Another super committee. Yes. Well, what's what's remarkable to me is that there are characters <laughs> in politics who are kind of become kind of cable news fodder. Michelle Bachman's a perfect example. But in, in most cases, they don't have a lot of power. They don't wield a lot of influence. What is so incredible about this is that all the folks that we kind of delight in showing you crazy clips of who are in better times, I, I assume, I guess, sideshows, are genuinely running the strategy and calling the shots in the House Republican Caucus right now. Yeah, that's because there is no longer a Republican establishment. I mean, there's no gray eminence. There's no Jim Baker who's going to get everybody in a room and knock their heads together and tell them to knock it off. There is just a galaxy of independent power bases. There's a galaxy of independent billionaires who will do with their money what they will do with their money and, it, and, and won't care what Reince Priebus or John Boehner thinks about it. So I think one of the problems you have is you have people who not only are insulated in safe districts but are empowered independently by these other, by these other centers of power that answer essentially to no one. That's it. I'm glad you made that point because Eric Bowler had a good piece today in which he basically, from Media Matters, he basically said, look, people keep talking about gerrymandering. Yeah, and we say it on the show and it gets said all day on cable news about how these are safe districts, safe districts, safe districts. But of course, gerrymandered house seats aren't necessarily new and they even exist on the Democratic side. I've grown up in big cities my whole life in Chicago and New York. And believe me, no one I've ever voted for for Congress was running in a competitive race in the general election. So gerrymandering can't be the thing that explains all of what's going on here. Well, no, because, and, and I grew up all my life in Massachusetts, which is the, the home of the state, of, uh, which is, happens to be the Commonwealth where, where was born the guy who gave gerrymandering its name. Right. So I'm, I'm in no position to argue about this either. But also, Elbridge Jerry, I never interviewed either, by the way. But <laughs> there, there's more to it than that. There's, there is this, what I think, both, a, a, oddly enough, a fracturing and a strengthening of the, of, of the Republican Party. Fracturing in that there is no Republican establishment anymore, but strengthening in there are incredibly powerful centers of influence with a lot of money behind them that operate independently. And, and what we've seen is the decentralization of that power has empowered these kinds of people that are now rising to the front and no one can even stop them from becoming the face of the party. No, and that's why I think all of these, and I'm, I'm sure that, you know, uh, that members of Congress said what they said, you know, when the MSNBC researcher bat, batted their eyes at the members of Congress. But the fact is, I don't think there are 20 people who will vote for a continuing resolution among the Republicans. Yeah. I mean, you are, you are talking about people who will instantly become the rhino, the tutti rhinos yep. of all time. And I mean, Cliff Stearns, go, go talk to Cliff Stearns, who was in Congress for 22 years and got exactly. his butt handed to him. The, un the unshirted hell that will be released upon these people once they do that. And I'm looking at the House Dem Republican Caucus, and I'm not seeing 20 of those profiles no, in courage. I'll be lucky if I see three. Charles Pierce from Esquire, thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Elder Jerry drew a district that looked like a salamander, hence gerrymander. True story.